Coming up on DITV, the government shutdown, how it's affecting university students. The Iowa legislative session begins today. Stay tuned for more important details. What did we miss over the last month in Hawkeye Athletics? I'll fill you in coming up in sports. Now Iowa City had a wild weekend of snow, but will it continue? Find out more in weather. All that and more coming up on this Monday, January 14th edition of DITV. Don't go anywhere. DITV starts right now. Good morning and thank you for tuning in. I'm Susanna Cluster. And I'm Noah Gowdy. We currently are living through history as we head into the 24th day of the longest government shutdown in U.S. history. After Saturday, the shutdown surpassed the previous record of 21 days during 1995. Still, the end doesn't seem anywhere near as both parties are unwilling to budge. As the shutdown carries on, the effects continue to alter the lives of many Americans. We have DI reporter Josie Fischels in the studio to speak more on how the government shutdown is affecting the UI. Good morning, Josie. Good morning. In what ways have you seen the shutdown affecting research on campus? Fortunately, um, most of the projects are funded by the NIH, which distributed its resources before the shutdown began. But other agencies such as NASA are really taking a hit when it comes to departments in physics and astronomy. Um, NASA funds um, most of these projects, and because no one is there right now working, um, employees there are either working without pay or um, projects who are collaborating with them are just getting by um, on what they have in their budgets. Now, if things continue without changing, what does this mean for researchers? For most researchers, this means that the next increment of funding to continue their projects may not come. Um, if the government shutdown include, um, continues into February, this increment might not happen and work stoppage could occur. That has been Josie Fischel's live in the studio. Thank you very much. Iowa law lawmakers will meet in Des Moines later today for the 88th Annual General Assembly's first session of, of this year, of this two-year cycle, with a $7.8 billion budget to work with, many Iowans are interested to find out what funding changes and cuts will take place. We will have the uh, we have the Iowa Daily Iowan Ethics and Politics editor Sarah Watson outside of the newsroom to tell us what we can expect for this session. That's right. The 88th General Assembly will gavel in today at 10 a.m. And 2019 marks the third year that there will be a Republican trifecta in state government meaning that the House, Senate, and Governor's seats are all held by Republicans. And there are a few issues that we've seen along the campaign trail that will come to fruition in this session. A few that Governor Reynolds, who is elected to her first term in November after a hotly contested race, a few legislative priorities that she's hinted at include restoring voting rights to felons and offering birth control over the counter. Now, some legislative issues that came up uh, last legislative session in 2018 um, that Republican legislators and the governor would like to expand on include mental health legislation. Last year, the governor fund, um, championed opening mental health access centers and also championed a Future Ready Iowa Act, which aims to have 70% or more of the population educated beyond high school um, in the next few years. And a few, another legislative priority that um, Republican lawmakers and the governor have hinted that they will address this year is um, more tax cuts. However, Republican legislators stress that they won't step on the gas pedal of spending this year. They plan um, with the, even though they've got a $127 million surplus. And that's the legislative session. Keep, check back with us tomorrow for more coverage. Thanks. Back to you at the desk. The annual Winterfest in Coralville, Iowa took place yesterday with fun for the entire family to enjoy. I had the opportunity to attend the event and bring you all that it has to offer. 
Winter can be seen as a barren and dull time of the year for many people, but the city of Coralville has found a way to bring fun into the season for the whole family. It's just an excuse to get people out of the house in the middle of winter to have some free family fun and to show off the Ira River Landing area that we're in down here in Coralville. The city of Coralville has been hosting their annual Winter Fest for the last 12 years, partnering with local businesses and organizations to provide a fun and friendly atmosphere for everyone in attendance. Family-friendly businesses and organizations in the Coralville and greater Iowa City area get together once a year to do uh, just a free afternoon of family fun. And people seem to enjoy it and come out in groups. A few of the activities that took place throughout the event were live performances, magic shows, face painting, character drawings, and the kids' favorite, balloon animals. Oh, I love, we love working with the kids. Kids are, kids are the thing that we do most, we work with most of all, and we really enjoy them. Uh, they're endless fun, they're smart, and they're just great to be around. Now there really is something for everyone at the event and organizers said they had more than 1,000 people in attendance. That's really amazing Noah. I'm kind of sad I wasn't able to go. I mean if you want to go there's always going to be next year. They plan on continuing this event for many more years to come. But speaking about winter we have snow all over the ground outside. Yeah and it's our first day back of classes and hopefully students are able to get around campus uh, without any, too much trouble. Let's toss it over to Dylan in the weather studio to find out more. Thanks, Noah and Susana. And yes, on that winter fest note, we do currently have roughly four to five inches of snow that now cover the ground here in Iowa City and all around campus. Now, as we look into today's forecast, this morning we have temperature of 21 degrees and partly cloudy skies, so the sun may shine out a little bit throughout the day. Now, as we continue into this evening, we have a temperature of 29 degrees, so it does raise throughout the day, and we, those cloudy skies will continue. Now as we move into our extended five day forecast for your upcoming week, tomorrow we have a high of 35 degrees and a low in the low 20s. We have cloudy skies as well, similar to today. Now as we move into Wednesday, the sun may peek its face out a little bit. We have a high of 30 degrees and a low in the lower 20s. Thursday, the clouds come back with our high in the low 30s and our low in the high teens, our coldest low for the week. Then finally on Friday, as we wrap up our first weeks of classes, we have cloudy skies and a high of 27 degrees and a low in the low teens. So that's definitely our coldest day of the week. Now, as you look at Friday, we also have an 80% chance of some snow showers coming in later that night. Well, that's all I got in the weather studio. No snow during the first part of this week, but look out for the weekend, and especially that Friday night where we may get some snow showers to come. Noah and Susana, back to you guys at the desk. With winter weather in full swing, driving can already be pretty tricky without any construction to get in your way. As of this morning, Governor Street has been partially shut down for maintenance. The street, which is also part of Highway 1, is closed between Iowa Avenue and Jefferson Street. This portion of Governor Street is expected to be closed through June as the city works to replace a bridge over Ralston Creek. Make sure to account for the new construction as you plan your icy winter traveling. And now, Susanna, some people that got away from that icy winter that we were having here were the Iowa Hawkeyes who headed down south for the Orange for the Outback Bowl. Yeah, <laughs> it was wonderful weather down there, and we also came back with a W, so I can't complain about that. That's true. Let's send it over to Natalie in the sports studio to find out more. Thanks, guys. On New Year's Day, Iowa took on number 18 Mississippi State in the Outback Bowl in Tampa, Florida. Former DITV sports director Bo Bowman gives us the recap from Tampa. It was a wild one in Tampa as the Hawks took on the number 18th ranked Mississippi State Bulldogs in the 2019 Outback Bowl. Iowa started off slow and the Bulldogs put two through the uprights to take a 6-0 lead in the first. Then in the second quarter, the Hawkeye offense came to life and scored 17 points to take a 17-6 lead into the half. But Mississippi State came out firing in the second half, scoring two touchdowns in five minutes. And Iowa's defense held off Mississippi State's offense in the fourth. 27-22. Iowa wide receiver Nick Easley was named the 2019 Outback Bowl MVP for his 104 yards and two touchdowns on eight receptions. From Tampa Bay, Florida, this has been Bo Bowman, DI TV Sports. With this victory, Iowa finished the 2018 season as number 25 in the AP poll. But next season, the Hawks will be losing a couple of familiar faces to the NFL draft in May. One Hawkeye who played last his last game Last collegiate game in Tampa is defensive back Amani Hooker. We have Declan Levy here standing by with more on his decision to go pro. Good morning, Declan. Good morning, Natalie. 
Well, now, Declan, since Amani Hooker is about to leave for the draft after his junior year, do you think he's going too early, or do you think this is the right time? I think this is absolutely the right time for Amani Hooker to leave. His stock will never be higher. Look at Desmond King. His junior year, he had the option to leave. He was going to be a top 15 pick, and he ended up going in the third round the next year. This is the right time for Amani to go. Okay, well, I, that sounds really good, but what's, what specifically can Hooker bring to an NFL team? Well, the word specifically that kind of floats around with his name is flexibility. He can play multiple positions towards the end of this last year. He was kind of a hybrid linebacker and corner, something that's very coveted in the NFL, which is a pass-heavy league. So Amani brings a lot of flexibility into the positions he can play, as well as his size and his savviness. Well, that'll be good to look forward to in the future. But come back tomorrow morning when DITV Sports Director Lucy Rodine will tell us more about defensive end Anthony Nelson's decision to head to the NFL. But even though Iowa fans might be a little sad about some Hawkeye football players leaving early, at least the Iowa, Iowa has the Iowa basketball team to keep their spirits up. The Hawks took on number 16 in Ohio, number 16 Ohio State in Carver on Saturday. It was the animal Star Wars. This one. In the first half, Tyler Cook found Joe Wieskamp under the basket and went down the paint for an easy bucket. And Jordan Bohannon made his way to the basket but couldn't quite get the finish. But don't worry, Luca Garza came in for the offensive rebound. But that wasn't all Luca did as the big guy showed off his range with this three. Iowa won this one 72 to 62. Characterized turnovers in the first half, a um, couple shots that we miss that we usually make. Um, but I think that is a testament to our defense because we were only down two at the half for how bad that we played offensively. So um, that's why we're um, really focusing defensively. That way, if we don't shoot well, um, we'll still be in games. You know, our idea, our mentality was just to go inside and try to give him the foul. You know, it's uh, we were really aggressive. You know, I, I did a good job, and Ryan came in and did a great job on him. We just, uh, you know, as well as TC, you know, they, they, uh, when you get them off the floor, that you know, uh, that makes it a lot, a lot easier to beat, them, you know, get a lead, and different stuff like that. And, you know, even in the first half when we couldn't really get our lead, you know, our defense was really good. Now, unfortunately for Iowa, Tyler Cook left this one early with an injury, so stick with DITV Sports for updates on his status. But that's it for us in the sports studio. But come back tomorrow for more on Jordan Bohannon's record-breaking performance on Saturday. No and Susanna, back to you. Thank you for tuning in to this Monday, January 14th edition of DITV. Be sure to head over to dailyiowan.com for all your latest news every day of the week. And if that isn't enough for you th of the Daily Iowan for you, be sure to check out our print edition on newsstands now. For DITV, I'm Noah Gowdy. And I'm Susanna Kloster. Have a great day, Iowa City.